with the bank. <laughs> when I left that dealership, I, I became the top salesperson, like I said. And I, my manager, my dealer, actually, at the time, you know, because like I said, he, he eventually started to like me. He called me politely or, or in his affectionate way. He called me a pain in the ass. That was his affectionate way of saying persistent, right? And I used to always correct him when he'd say, John, you're just a pain in the ass. I say, well, you mean persistent? He says, yeah, that's yeah I mean, it's okay, but it's, I think I mean the other, you know? But when I left, he said, John, you made more money than any of the salesmen here. You doubled a couple of the other guys, and you made more money than my man, your manager. He says, you know, you were the highest grossing salesman and sold more cars for list price than any of the salesmen in the history of the store. And that's what he told me when I left the store. And when he invited me back in to work with the salespeople again as their trainer, now these are guys I sold with that were in the business for 10 years before I ever started. And when he invited me in, he said, you know, John, here's the deal. I asked these guys. He said, I gave it a while after you left the store, but I asked these guys, what do you think if John came in and showed us some of the things he used to do when he was here? And what if he showed us some of the things he's learned since? And he says, across the board, the guys said they'd love it. They said, yeah, we'd love it. And when I got back to the store, Dan Holm, who was the 13 year in a row, top salesman before I get thrown in. When I got back, he was sitting in my class. It was six salespeople in the class. And there was Dan taking notes. And afterwards, Dan is, now he's a little bit older guy. Dan said, uh, said I'm proud of you, kid. I'm proud of you. You, know, you did it right. So I, I really want you guys to understand that this, this is life-changing stuff. It's life-changing stuff. When you become a professional salesperson, not with a job, but a professional salesperson who does this out of passion, conviction, love of the customer, love of service to the customer, when you start liking your customers and stop calling them names, you gotta stop. It's hard. Less, it's hard to break that. But when you go back to the store and you hear somebody call a customer a name, stroke, flake, whatever names you you know what they are. When you hear that, you gotta you gotta check yourself and go. I cannot become a top performer if I don't like my customers. I can't. You gotta stop using those language. All right. So when we look at these issues, here's what I do. I take the words and I use them first. So let's take the first one, right? So let's get some notes written down on, on these. This is on page seven, right? So let's write down some examples. You guys should already have one or two written down by now. What are the two you have written down already? What's the, one? What, what, what's the first one is this one, right? What do you have written down? You should have this one written down. That's number one. What is it? Looking, shopping. That's number one. Have that written down. Number two is, is which one? Right. Yeah, that's number two. So number one is, are you doing some looking and shopping? Number two is, are you looking for the product or price or both? And I phrase it different ways. Why? Because I'm, I like variety, spicy life, man. So sometimes I'll say to a customer, so what's your main objective today? Are you guys focusing more like on vehicles and kind of narrowing the field down as far as what you like in a vehicle? Or have you guys done that already and you're really narrowing down the pricing part of it and you want to talk some numbers? Where, where are you guys at in your process? That's why I phrase it to some people. And they go, well, you know, I, you know, I don't know. I said, so it sounds like maybe even both. You're just you're kind of in the middle somewhere. And they go, yeah, actually we are. I say, well, great. That's actually how a lot of my customers start out. They've done some research, but they want to confirm what they know, and they want to get some new information so they know that they're making the right decision. Is that right? And they go, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, all right, let me give you another one. First stop. Here's the idea. Some of you think that's an objection. Let me change your mind. It's not. It's actually a compliment. And because you view it as an objection, you treat it as one. When you view it as an, a, a compliment, you're going to love it. Watch this. Let me put you on a dating show. Let's go back to the 1970s. Let's go back to one of those classic dating shows. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you remember those old TV shows on TV Land, right? Those dating shows. Right? So let's put you, since there's a bunch of men in the room, let's put you, a row of you, walk out onto a stage. There's a young, beautiful woman sitting in a chair with the host, and she has a microphone. And the host turns to her and says, you get to pick which one you'd like to ask a question to first. Now, who in the room thinks it'd be bad to be picked first? Anybody think that? If, if out of a row of five or ten men, she says, the guy in the blue shirt, what does that tell you if she chose you first? Thank you. What is it? Is that a compliment or an objection? Do you think he's going to crap? She picked me first. I wish she picked me last. I wish she'd go shopping with everybody else first and see if she likes anyone else before she comes to me. This is horrible. I'm the first. I don't know what to do. Do you think that? No. You're going, hello. How you doing? That's what you do because you're no fool. You know, to be picked first is a compliment. But when a customer says it, we freak out. Crap, now uh, what am I supposed to do with this guy? No, it's a compliment. And here's how you do it. I say it first. 
So when I greet a customer, especially if they say which of the answers, product, product. Question, product, I ask this. I say, so as you're shopping, do we get to be your first stop or have you actually been able to go to other places? Do we get to be your what? First, first stop. stop. Do, you, do we get to be your first stop or have you been to a couple places already? Wow. Listen to that. Do we get to be your first stop or have you been to a couple places? Watch what happens. They've got two choices now. Let's play it out. I want you to pick one of the two choices. Do we get to be your first stop or have you been to a couple places already? No, I've been to a couple places already. Oh, well, fantastic. Now watch this. Here's what I know intuitively as a pattern. When people find the right car, the right deal, the right information, and the right experience, what do most of them do? Uh -huh. So anybody who's been to a few places, hasn't bought, what is missing? The right. Uh -huh. the right uh -huh. Is it a fair, again, I'm just going on patterns, guys. Is it a fair pattern guess that if he's been to a few places, it's because he's missing at least one? The car, the deal, the information, the experience. Is that fair, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. So what do you think I do? Do you think I assume? No. What do you think I do? Ask questions. Ask questions. So what do I say? I say, well, it sounds like you've done some shopping. Do you mind if I ask? Most people, if they don't pull the trigger, haven't found the car they want, maybe haven't found a deal that they like, or maybe just weren't treated the right way. Was it a combination, or what kept you from pulling the trigger so far? The price was too high. The price was too high. So what is he telling me? Had he found the car and the price matched his wants, what would he have done? Oh, 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 oh. So have, if I have a car and a price he thinks is a good price, what does that then tell me? Oh, 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 oh. That I'll probably sell him some. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's what I do. I say, so it sounds like you know this whole shopping thing, until you find the right car and the right deal and someone to treat you serious, you're not able to pull the trigger. But if that happens, you're looking to do business. Is that right? All right. <laughs> did I just ask like a closing question 17 seconds after meeting a customer? Yes. yes. Yeah, I did. And I do it all the time. Here's why. Because I'm closing on his value, on his ideas, not on mine. That's it. He just told me the reason he hasn't bought and the reasons he will buy. Can you repeat the question that you asked him first? Yes. Please. If I remember it. <laughs> Thank you. What's the question? Yeah, so it sounds like you're in the beginning stages, right? So it sounds like you guys are in the beginning stages. So does that mean we're your first stop, or have you actually been able to go to a couple places already? So here he says, I've been to a few places. So what do I do? Yeah, I say, you know, most people, if they haven't bought, it's usually a couple of things. You know, didn't find what they wanted didn't find the deal they liked, or just didn't get treated right. Was it one of them combination? What kept you guys from pulling the trigger? And here's where they start unleashing the floodgates of how to sell them a car. It's crazy. They say, well, you know, we just actually, he might say price, she might say, actually, I wouldn't have bought even if they had the price. Well, what do you mean by that? They were really right. experienced. Yeah. And I say, you know, folks, I want to apologize on behalf of Salespeople, I know how tough it is. I hear these kinds of stories all the time, and quite frankly, I feel the same. How many of you can relate to feeling what they're feeling right now? Is that empathy? Yeah. I don't have to make that up. I feel it. And I say, you know what, folks? Here's what I'd like to do if you run. I'd like to see what I have in my inventory that would be a good fit for you guys. If it also matches your budget, and if you feel like you're treated in the right ways, I'm going to offer you a chance to do business and get this thing over with. But if for some reason I can't do that, I'll get you out of here as quick as possible. Is that fair? Rewind. Rewind and yeah. say that again. I don't know what I just said. Okay, let me try it again. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Here we go. Watch this. I can't. Just, I can't recite it. I'll just get back in mode and then I'll say it naturally. Sorry. All right. It sounds like you're missing something. Whatever they're missing, right? And if you could get those, it sounds like you'd rather do this than not. It sounds like you'd rather get this over with and keep keep shopping. Am I hearing you right? They would say yes. And then I would say, well, what I'm going to try to do is what? <laughs> oh, Mike, whatever's, missing. whatever's missing. And if I can do that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do business. And if I can't, what? Get you out of here as quick as possible. Is that a reasonable statement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think isn't reasonable. Watch this. This is a man saying to me that, that he's been to a few places. Let's take the opposite side of the room, right? So do we get to be your first stop, or have you actually been to a couple places already? Uh, first stop. Oh, well, fantastic. Well, first of all, thank you for choosing us first. I really appreciate that. Just that. Thank you for choosing us first. I really appreciate the opportunity. Watch this. Watch this. Do you mind if I ask, out of all of the options out there, what was it that made you decide to start with us? Uh, 
thank you. Watch this. Here's what they'll say. You have a car I'm interested in. I saw an ad I'm interested in. My friend told me to come here. I've had service here and liked the way I was treated. You're close to my house, proximity. Here's what he'll tell me. He'll tell me his reasons for wanting to do business with me. Is that good information? Yeah. So what do I do? I say, so it sounds like you saw some ads, and if we have the car that was in the ad, and if the deal is as good as it sounds, it sounds like you were looking to find a place you can do business. Fantastic. Well, let me see if I have the car that was in the ad. Let me see if the deal is as good as it's supposed to be. And if I can do that, I'll give you a chance to do business. And if for some reason I don't have the car anymore, if you don't think it feels fair, I'll get you out of here as quick as possible. Is that fair? Yep. Done. You guys think it's an objection. I tell you it's a compliment. It is a compliment and an honor to be chosen first. And in fact, it's reasonable for them to do business relations first. Imagine you're at home and you have a project, right? And you need one of your extension poles to get the light bulb that's in the top of the ceiling and you don't have the extension pole and you don't have a ladder, but you know there is a tool that you can extend up there and screw the light bulb, but you don't know, you don't, you're like, ah, I need that. Where do I go first? Where do I go first? Right? Well, now watch this. Do you believe there are certain people who will drive past the Home Depot to go to a Lowe's? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Are there certain people that will drive past the Home Depot, past the Lowe's, to go to a Ace Hardware? Yes. 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 Are there people who will drive past all of those to go to Walmart? Yes. yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So the proximity is not necessarily the highest value. Are there people who know if I go to Walmart I can get it for less than if I go to Home Depot, but if I go to Walmart I'll end up buying $300 more crap? Amen. Is that true? Right. So they're going like, I'm not going to Walmart, even though I can buy it and save six bucks on it, I'm going to walk out with a shopping cart full of crap. Right. So is that true, yes or no? Yes. So that's my point. <coughs> People make decisions for their own reasons. Your job is to discover those reasons and then help them use those reasons to do this with you. Right. And that's the secret. So that's all I do. The challenge most of you have is you don't ask questions. You make yeah. assumptions. Because you're all egomaniacs, just right. like I am. <laughs> We're all egomaniacs. We all think from our perspective, and we all think we're right. It's true. We're wired that way. It's human nature. How many of you have ever heard the expression, if you're to be successful, you have to treat people the way you want to treat them? You want to treat them. That's nonsense. That's my point. That's utter madness to think to be successful, I have to treat people like I want to be treated. The way they want to be treated. Yeah, but we don't think that. Our first answer is treat them the way I want to be treated. Why? Because they're you? They're not you. Stop acting like everybody's you. They're not you. They're them. Find out who they are. <laughs> and you'll sell more stuff. Yeah. All right. Sorry, do you have another question? Um, yeah. Um, well, if you have maybe a woman that's yeah. not shopping and, yeah. and, and you're the first stop, yeah. and you know, she's not going to make a decision in the first place. That's fair. Because you know, she's going to go at least two or three more places. And, and that's not a woman thing, okay. but that's fair. But, but, you know, yeah, I mean, go ahead. So, how would you handle that? How, how would you, what would you say? I'm not, uh, let me try to answer that. Uh, first of all, the scenario is, you know, you've got somebody and they're telling you that you're their first stop because in their mind they're determined to shop around and do, you know, go to a few places. But that's not actually the ultimate determination. My point is, there are goals and then there are driving forces, okay? So the person says, my goal is to shop around and go to a few places, but that's not actually their goal. Their goal is to do what? Find the right car and the right budget at the right, that's their goal. Right. The primary goal is to find the right solution for their life. Right. Right? Right. right? right. So in their head, they think, if I go to enough places, I will eventually find it. Right. So what I do is I speak to the lower driving force. I don't pay attention to the top level stuff. Mm -hmm. The top level stuff is not the important stuff. The driving force, the motivator is the important thing. So people say stuff. Because they just wired to, patterned to, because they're afraid, they say it. But the goal is not, I really want to go to seven dealerships. I really want to meet seven salespeople, and I really want to look at seven products. That's not really the goal. The goal is to feel inside that I'm making the right decision. And as soon as that happens, I'll kind of go, hmm, this feels really good. And I might check off the last three places if it happens at the third place. But if it happens at the first place, I might be really tempted to check off the next six places. Right. And especially if you as a salesperson reinforce and help them realize that that's their real goal anyway. Right. Which, one of the closest I'll teach you later, is going to tell you that. Does that make sense, guys? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go a little bit deeper here. Let's go, I'm uh, not buying today. Not buying today. What's the main idea of not buying today? 
They don't want to make a hasty decision, right? What's the key words of not buying today? Something today, not, not buying. buying. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Right? So what do I do? If I'm following the principles, I identify this step one. Identify the common issue in this case like the keywords not buying today. I say, okay, that's the keyword. Step two, if you remember, was what? I got I to gotta figure out how do I introduce that idea for them so I can reframe it. Right. So if a customer tells me you're my first stop, they're essentially telling me where I stand in order. But if I say it first, I'm telling them that I receive their compliment. So by saying it first, I reframe it, right? So if I wait for you to tell me you're not buying today, then any attempt I make to counter that sounds like I'm trying to tell you that you can't do what you said you were going to do. So I don't do that. I introduce it first. Here's what it sounds like in real time. Something like this. Are you out doing some looking, shopping a little bit today? They say, yes, they are. They are. I say, well, fantastic. Thank you for coming to our dealership. I really appreciate it. Do you mind if I ask, when you say you're out looking today, what is it you're looking for more of? Like more of the product kind of stuff, more of the pricing kind of stuff, maybe both? What kind of information were you guys hoping for today? Well, we're more kind of product. I say, so it sounds like you guys are in the beginning stages then, kind of just still figuring out what you want. Yeah, actually, we are. We're, we've looked at a few things, and we're still trying to figure out what we want. I say, hey, no problem. Maybe I do the first stop. Maybe I don't. Maybe I go to not buying today. I say, so since you're in the beginning stages, I think it's fair that you probably don't have to buy today. Uh, a lot of people, they come in, and you know, their, their mind is really just kind of see what's out there. So if that's where you guys are at, I just want you to know that that's OK. That you don't have to buy today. If it turns out you find something you fall in love with, if you love the deal and you love the way you're treated and you do decide to buy, I also won't stop you. Is that fair? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> so I asked the question, so is this something that has to happen today or do you guys have some flexibility? What do you think most people choose? Flexibility. Flexibility. I say, great. I love flexible buyers. Great. That, that takes a little pressure off of me. So do you guys have some flexibility, or is this something that has to happen today? <clears throat> no, we've got some flexibility. I say, fantastic, that gives us options. So what I can do is I can check my inventory I have now. I can even see what I have coming in down the road then. Is that OK? And they'll say, sure. And I say, obviously, folks, if it came down to the wire where you said, you know what, John, I love this car, I love this deal, I love the way I'm treated, I want to buy it from you, I'm also not going to stop you. Is that OK, too? Yeah. And what do you think everybody says? Yeah. That sounds fair. Okay. That's the idea. Now, you don't have to buy today, do you? No. So we have some flexibility? Yeah. That's good. That means I can check in. <coughs> so I say, are you looking at product price or both? They say product. I say, well, fantastic. Since you guys are still trying to figure out what you want, I can offer you this if it's OK. I can look at incoming inventory as well as what I have on the ground. Do we have that kind of flexibility, or is this something that has to happen today? They say, no, we've got some flexibility. Perfect. That gives us options. Uh, obviously, if you find something that you really like, if you like the way you're treated, you like the deal, if you decide you want to do it, I also won't stop you. And people, every time I do this, you know what they say? That sounds fair. And I say, great. I say, folks, if you're in the beginning stages, the last thing I'm going to do is ask you to buy a car today. Is that fair? And you know what they say? Yes. I learned that from a door-to-door -door salesman. Let me tell you a story. I'm at my house, and all of a sudden, Who's at my door? I'm in my PJs, laying around. I walk over to the door. I open the door. There's a young man standing there, khaki pants, polo shirt, nice hair, right? Looking clean, looking good. Here's this man standing with a big old smile on his face like this. I open the door and I say, hello. He says, hi there, sir. He's standing back about six feet because he understands space. Standing back about six feet, he understands psychology. Here's what he says. He says, hi there, sir. I have pudding in my pants, but that's not why I'm here. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, you got what? He said, I'm putting my pants, but that's not why I came by here today. I said, you've got putting. He said, actually, I'd rather not talk about it if that's okay. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, what? I said, I don't understand. Why are you here? He said, I'm glad you asked. And since you did, I'll go ahead and tell you. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. This is exactly what he does. He reaches back pocket, he grabs a flyer out. He says, so what I'm doing is I'm introducing some of your neighbors. In fact, I just was visiting with your neighbor right up the street here. You may know them, the Adams. They, uh, they were pretty excited what I showed them. In fact, actually, right up the street there, you've got another neighbor. They were excited, too. But what I'm showing them is this opportunity right here to take advantage of some special pricing that we have on some of these magazines. And I said, oh, you're selling magazine subscriptions. And he says, actually, sir, no. The last thing I'm going to do is ask you to buy a magazine for me today. And I said, I don't understand them. What are you doing? He said, well, I appreciate the question, so I'll continue. So, it, so <laughs> I'm not kidding. He 
goes right into it. So what I'm doing basically, he continues to outline the thing. And